I've been waiting all year to chase the deer, now the season has come to go. I've been scouting a trail on a white oak ridge, somehow I just know. If I climb a tree, deer will come by me, that moment of truth will arrive. Most people don't understand me, I'm a bow hunter, do or die. I love the sticks, I love the strings, I love to shoot an arrow away. I love the sights, the smells, and the sounds in the outdoors where I play. I'm tradition, I am history. I love to watch the feathered shafts fly. I don't hunt to live, I live to hunt. I'm a bow hunter, do or die. Where you'll find me is no mystery in some secluded place. I'll be the one in camouflage with paint all over my face. I'll be sitting there quietly listening to some old coyotes cry. Where I belong, part of nature's song, a bow hunter do or die. I love the sticks, I love the strings, I love to shoot an arrow away. I love the sights, the smells, and the sounds in the outdoors where I play. I'm tradition, I am history, I love to watch the feathered shafts fly. I don't hunt to live, I live to hunt, I'm a bow hunter, do or die. I love the sticks, I love the strings, I love to shoot an arrow away. I love the sights, the smells, and the sounds of the outdoors where I play. I'm tradition, I am history, I love to watch the feathered shafts fly. I don't hunt to live, I live to hunt, I'm a bow hunter, do or die. I don't hunt to live, I live to hunt, I'm a bow hunter, do or die. You know, guys like I mean, these animals Bear, are the size of Brahma Howard bulls. Hill. They look like Brahma bulls. Saxton Pole, Art Young, what an African the adventure. Thompson Brothers. Glenn Thanks St. again, Charles, Katie, Fred and Asbell, Billy, and Ben, and Garrett, Gene and Brooke, and for letting me go on this. I really appreciate my family. Hi there, I'm Bill Langer, and welcome to Traditional Adventures 4. In this video, we'll be hunting Africa, Texas, Florida, Maine, and Connecticut. I'd like to thank you all for supporting our videos, and I hope you enjoy. Hey, a person right here. I am. What do you think about that, boys? Yeah. I'm gonna miss you guys. Can you give me a kiss? My home is far away from here. I hail from Wyoming. Here, can I have a you kiss? You may wonder what I'm doing. Here, can Daddy have a kiss? Where the lion is the king. Mommy, I had them kissing me too. Oh. <laughs> I see that. I got you guys kissing. You're traveling now by four wheel drive. It's finally here. Here's to the trip. Got a cup of coffee going here. Bob, are you ready for Africa or what? Oh, like definitely ready for Africa. Two days ago, I saw a vehicle that you all that tank out. <laughs> Let's go. First stop, Frankfurt, before we head down to Namibia. Uh, about an eight hour flight, and we'll be there. It's Stein, Germany. We got like a 12 hour layover before our Namibia. And that's a 12 hour flight, so we came down here with Bob's brother Steve. We're gonna come down to this jazz festival here and walk around. Back in Wyoming, but you've never felt more alive. German beer is supposed to be the best. Salute. Salute. Hey, here, here. Safe journey, Is that your special Salute. Final flight to Namibia from Frankfurt. It's a 12 hour flight. We're here in Namibia, we've got about a five and a half hour ride, I guess, we'll be there. We're, uh, we're about to drive through downtown Windhoek. Yes, sir, I'm going to be pleased to meet you. Other guys are coming up. 
I'm not chasing cows. This is my father, Dick. Yeah, Zebra gazelle and we're yeah. boost. Bob Boyle. Well, I'm chasing now. Yeah. How are you? Fine, Chef. African I'm Johnny. Mike. Mike. Yes, me. Me, Mike. Yes. yes. You're traveling now by four-wheel drive. No, we've got to take this in the past. Searching Pitches. for adventure so back home, the west is tame. But like the so old frontier and wild hills, yeah, it's very exciting. Well, I wanted to spend the first night just following a dung beetle around. Hope we can find one. Because we're here, he's got something to do. <laughs> a half an hour. <laughs> if he stays close to you, Mike, you'll find him soon. <laughs> Thank you. Cake <laughs> buffalo, even snakes. You watch constantly for danger. One wrong move is all it would take. And you'll never see your home so again. Okay. Back in Wyoming. But you've never felt more right, alive than you. Every night the lion sings. African cowboy. You've traded so, in your horse. Look, You're traveling safe. now yeah. by four wheel drive. Well, Steady is yeah. your force. You're searching for adventure. Back home, the West is tamed. But like the old frontier in Wild Bill's day. Uh, we're here hunting with Makalan hunting safaris. I'm in an elevated box blind here. Uh, and Tony Lau just dropped me off. He's the owner. Um, see what happens. My first, my first day hunting in Africa should be exciting. This kudu bull is not a monster trophy, but it is a mature bull, and that's exactly what I was looking for. All I needed to do was wait for the perfect shot, and he was about to give it to me. My first kudu. Looks like a good hit. Looks like I hit him perfect. I saw the broadhead sticking out the other side when he ran away. Blood was coming out good. <sighs> yes. Man, that's awesome. He's standing right here when I hit it. Looks like I hit it right, you know, behind the shoulder. The arrow went clear to the other side. It had about a foot sticking out of it. And on the first turn, there was blood coming out and blood there. It ran like this, it hit that tree and fell down once it got up and kept going. It's coming out its right hand side, this will be coming out its left hand side. Or vice no versa. Way. Wenzel Woodsman I use. It's the, uh, I've had good luck at it with white tails. And uh, Dale Karch from Three Rivers sent me a couple packages to try out. I told him I liked them. He said, try them out in Africa. And uh, Wenzel Woodsman's done good so far. Right there. 
I think I'm going to a four blade. I really like to thank my wife and kids for letting me go. Uh, I got a real special wife, and my kids are very understanding, very young. This uh, my first African animal, kudu bull. Antoni says it's a mature one. It looked mature by description. Definitely not the biggest around, but it was fun. the afternoon of the first day here in Africa. This morning I shot a nice kudu, um, got him back. One of the guys we're hunting with, Mike O'Connell, shot a nice warthog. Uh, my father and Bob both saw a game but decided not to shoot, so I'm in a pit blind today, um, or this afternoon I should say, and uh, I just got in here, I haven't seen anything yet, but this is really cool. The variety of bird life in Africa is incredible. I believe this bird is called the hornbill. Besides the guinea fowl, the most common bird that we saw was the Franklin, like this one and they normally came to the water in the afternoon where the guinea fowl would be there all day. The crackling that you hear in the audio are actually little black bugs that were swarming around the camera inside the pit blind. This warthog kind of took me by surprise and I quickly got ready for the shot. As I start to put tension on the string to shoot this warthog, I notice a long shadow out of the right side of the blind. Ignoring it for a moment, I put the shot on the warthog. To my amazement, a giraffe steps out just after the warthog runs into the bush. With the little black gnats still swarming around the video camera, I enjoy one of Africa's most recognizable animals. It was pretty awesome to witness the work that a giraffe has to put into just getting a drink of water. All I can say is unbelievable. <laughs> I'm hunting here with Makalan Safaris in Namibia with Antoni Lowe and I got in a, blind, a pit blind here about 3.30. It's now a quarter hour, 10 after 4. 
I shot a warthog, hit him a little bit forward, looks like in the shoulder with a shoulder and neck meat, but he fell down. I watched him falling as he left. He looks like he's pretty hurt. But no sooner does he run away and a big bull giraffe steps out and starts drinking from the water. And you just saw it on film. Unbelievable. Africa is unbelievable. I've been saving to come here for over 15 years. And I thought it was going to be awesome, but it's way better than I ever thought it was going to be. This is incredible. But uh, it ended up, couldn't, couldn't go after him, recover him until after dark. So the footage is going to be a little bit dark here. But my first African warthog. Now we'll join my father on his first day in Africa. Just shot a nice warthog. It's laying down over there. I'd say it went maybe 50 yards. It was back a little bit, but I, I caught good vitals because it's it dropped. I watched it drop. But well, we both got lucky tonight. Uh, I shot my pig around 3:30. We. Uh, we filmed it, we filmed it when we recovered it, but it was pretty dark, so we're doing it again, and my father got lucky as well. We're, we're hunting with Makalan Safaris here. It was a good night. Good night out hunting, got two warthogs in here. I shot mine about 4 o'clock, but uh, not being picked up until pitch dark, I uh, didn't, didn't film the recovery. In fact, I gotta get my arrow, it's laying out there. <laughs> nice warthogs, though. Told you I'd have a dull arrow, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> Supposedly there's a lot of eland in this area and I'd really like to shoot an eland, so, or elan, depending on how you, how you pronounce it. So we'll just sit it out and see what happens. By the time I got the camera on, the eelin was already at the water. The eelin are commonly referred to as the world's largest antelope. They have the body size and shape of a Brahma bull. The big guy starts to get a little nervous, so I quickly ready for the shot. The loud noise that you're about to hear is my top bow limb hitting the side of the blind as I shoot. Within 60 seconds of being hit, the big bull is down. Oh, yes. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. An Elon bull. A beautiful Elon bull. He's down. 
I shot him a little bit farther forward than I would like. I'm shooting a 62 pound Black Widow recurve. I've got about a almost a 700 grain arrow, about a 685 grain arrow with a Wenzel Woodman, Woodsman's on the front. I have the Wenzel Woodsman with the 125 grain steel insert. So it makes it a 250 grain broadhead. And with the 2315 at about 30 inches, it's right up in the 680 grain range. And it went right through the front uh, shoulder of that eland. And he's down. <sighs> That's what I came to Africa for. That was top of my list. And he's just a beautiful bull eland. Or elan, depending on how you pronounce it. But he's down right in sight. He didn't go 100 yards. Okay, it's going to get dark quick here. It's about uh, 20 after 5 and it's pretty much dark at 6 o'clock. I'm here by myself. I'm going to go over and look at the bull. Get a little footage of him before it gets too dark. Oh, this is awesome. Okay, he was standing right there. You see the big marks in the sand right there. There's the blind. The blood starts right here. Good blood trail here. It's right through here. Only have a few minutes of tape left. There he is. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I just don't believe it. Man, oh man, oh man. This is just awesome. Look at the size of this animal. Would you look at this? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I don't have the strength to turn them over myself, but just look at the size of this animal. The largest antelope on earth, the Elan bull. I'm here in Namibia, hunting with Makalan Outfitters. Oh, what a beautiful animal. They're the size of a Brahma bull. Beautiful, beautiful animal. My gosh, what a beautiful animal. Oh, this is awesome. What a trip. What a hunt. Today is the second day of my hunt. I'm, I'm using a pit blind today. Um, new experience. Never hunted out of a pit blind, but we're going to try it. Wish me luck. There's never a dull moment in Africa on a water hole. There's always something to watch throughout the day. There's no question in my father's mind when he sees this big bull Elon that he's going to take him if offered the shot. The big bull and a younger bull finally make it to the water, and Dad has the shot he's been waiting for. I just shot a knee land bull. It's, it's a pretty nice one. It appears to made a real good hit. I got a pass through. Blood showed up right away. Um, I'll give the pH a, a call and we'll, we'll see what happens here. Um, <coughs> looks good. Looks good. That's my Elan. I shot it at 10 o'clock in the morning. I only caught one lung. It took us until 5 o'clock in the afternoon to, to find it. If it wasn't for the expertise of Antonio, uh, I would not have been able to find it. I gotta commend this professional hunter here. He is excellent.
Let's take a break from Africa and head back home to North America for some more bow hunting action. For this first deer hunt, I'm in a spot that I've never hunted before. I scouted it two weeks before the season and found a lot of white oak acorns dropping. This is the very first time I've sat in a stand. And within just a half hour of being there, I have this doe moving in to feed on the acorns. That hit looked perfect. <clears throat> that doe was right underneath me. Picked my spot, drew back. The hit looks good. I picked the last place that I saw her. I don't think she'll be much farther. I can see the arrow from here. The sign looks really good. I'm sitting on over a white oak here. It's dropping acorns like crazy. It sounds like it's raining. Um, I'll probably give her about 20 minutes. I think the hit looks really, really good though. Okay, there's the arrow. Like I said, the blood looks good on it. It's got good bright blood all the way up and down it. The exit's low, right on the bottom of her chest. I'm hoping the blood trail is easy to follow. Again, I'm going to have to film myself here, so bear with me. But she ran right straight out through here. Um, should be good. We'll just get on the blood now and trail her up. Yeah, I've got good blood right away. Okay, uh, it's getting darker faster than I thought it was gonna. Um, <clears throat> the blood is getting harder to see, so I think I'm gonna pull out and uh, come back with some flashlights and some help and see if we can't find this doe. Well, there she is. You're not gonna believe this. It's almost dark, but on my walk out, I ran right into her, laying there dead. Sometimes you're just lucky. Today I'm lucky. The blood went sparse pretty quickly. And uh, it got dark, and it's like at that light where the light won't pick it up real well, so I was going to go out and get some better lights and come back. I'm walking out the trail I walk in on. Well, I'm a good 200 yards from the stand. And there she is laying right there. So we got lucky. We'll go up and take a look at her. Grab my bow. There she is. Got the flies on her. But yeah, good long hit. It's almost dark. I gotta get her out of the woods here. But uh, not a bad doe. Just uh, lucked into her. I don't know why the blood was so bad. She ran a long ways quickly, and I think that's why it was. Low exit wound, but it was a good hit. It was a really good hit. She looks like a year and a half or two-year-old doe. I know it's getting kind of dark here, but it's the best I can do filming myself. Got kind of a steep hill here. I hit her high because she was right underneath me, but the arrow exited low, and she went on a straight death run, and here she is. Nice doe. She'll be good eating. Uh, End of, it's actually the end of the first week. The season's here in Connecticut. 2007 bow season's been open one week. You know, it's Saturday afternoon. and Made a good shot, good healthy doe. So pretty happy with her. We'll get her out of the woods now. November 10th, 2007. Got three days left in our uh, early bow season here in Connecticut. The rut has kicked in. We've seen a lot of bucks chasing does alongside of the road, but uh, 
unfortunately I haven't seen him in the stand yet. So wish me luck. As dark storm clouds roll in, this buck slips out of the timber into the food plot my father's hunting over. The buck runs just a short distance and then returns right behind my father's stand. Dad puts on quite a shooting exhibition before connecting with this buck. Well, the deer came in, a nice little buck, offered me a shot, I shoot over it. So then it runs off, does its usual, sniffing, looking around, wondering. I freeze, obviously, in a tree, get another arrow set, it walks back into the field, offers me a second shot. Now these are close shots, and I'm up in the air pretty high. I shoot over it again. So now I say, okay, I've got to do something different. What I do is I, third shot, I aim for the ground underneath its armpit. And lo and behold, I make a connection. And I have to realize that I'm shooting a recurve. It's just, you know, only about 170 feet per second. So the deer hears the sound and obviously can react. So it, it's, it's, a, it's a mighty challenge here. But we got our deer. I feel good. Nice little buck. I'm going to climb down and get it. Well, as you can see, I got my deer. Nice little four-pointer. Took it with a black widow recurve. Uh, it's gonna make good table fare. As you know, it's always a challenge to take a deer with a, with a bow, especially a recurve. So I, I'm pleased, real pleased. On this hunt, it's early September, I'm sitting over a food plot and the temperature is 85 degrees. This young buck is the first deer to enter the food plot. But the buck that follows is something else. I've never seen anything like this. I don't know whether this buck was hurt in a car accident or ran into a tree or was born like that. At this point, I'm not sure what's going on. I'm just trying to get some good footage of it. Besides having a screwed up antler, this buck's got a pretty good scar that runs from his belly to his back, about four inches behind his shoulders you can see here in the footage. I'm not really sure what to make of this buck, but as he starts to walk off, I decide he's too unique of a deer to let go, and I take him.
I just heard him go down. Wow, that's a wild looking deer. I had seen him once before and uh, he's got a horn that just grows like, looks like right up out of the eye socket or the top of the eye socket. Um, it was a close shot and good footage so I took him. What a wild looking deer. Let's get down and take a look at him. Wow. Okay. There's the arrow. Blood looks good on it. Looks real good. I was sitting right up there in that tree stand right there it was about a 15 yard shot wild looking buck wild looking buck young buck but I think he went down real close I don't think he went more than maybe 50 60 yards because I, I heard him fall so blood trail should be good let's go get dark good blood right here real good blood Real good blood. Okay, we're in the woods now. We're in the woods, and again, darkness is gonna fall here within the next half hour, but got blood right here. And right through here, I could see him run out through here. Blood looks good. I think he's right over in here. Okay, got blood right through here. Ah, there he is. Yeah, he didn't go very far at all. Right close, died right close to the field. That's cool. It's really hard filming yourself and I apologize, but this is the best I can do. Everyone else is out hunting themselves, so. Man, hit him good. What a wild looking deer. Wild, wild looking deer. Lift that head up there. Man, I've never seen anything like this. Look at that. Wow. I just heard another deer take off. But man, look at that. Shot him with the Black Widow bow and the Wenzel Woodsman. He's got some serious big ticks on him, but look at that. I don't know whether that's an injury. It looks like an injury. But, wow. What a wild looking deer. That's cool. Let's get him out to the field. Oh, here he is. I got him back out into the field where the light was a little better. He followed me into the woods there. But he's got this wild club antler here. It's just, it feels like the skull plate was broken earlier in the year. He's got a great big scar that runs up his side right here, all the way to his back. I don't know whether he was hit by a car or what, but he's got a great big scar that runs right up his side with this wild looking club antler here. I assume maybe it was broke. One, two, three points on this side. And there's some velvet still left on this here. But that's pretty neat. Really neat looking deer. And I thought this here was an engorged tick, but it's actually a wart. Which uh, you see in the magazines a lot. But I haven't seen very many deer actually with warts on them <clears throat> in person, but this one's one of them. But that's a wild, unique looking buck. Shot him with my Black Widow bow and Wenzel Woodsman Broadhead. Great hunt. Good clean kill. Gotta get him home and show the kids. Okay, let's get back in the tree stand with my father. On this hunt, he's using an old video camera because his good production camera was being repaired. Although the footage is not as crisp and clear as it is with a good camera, this is a real good buck for Connecticut, and we thought you'd want to see the footage anyways. To make matters more difficult from a filming standpoint, this buck is heading right into a shooting lane that covers up the camera's view. And although you can't see the buck real well, Dad places a good shot on him. Alright. 
November 2nd, Connecticut uh, deer season. It's been a long time since uh, September 15th and not getting a deer, but it's a nice deer. All right, catch you on the flip side. Uh, we're back in the woods here. I got my brother to help me. Uh, unfortunately, it's dark out, so we're trying to use the lights of the vehicles here to, to uh, you know, get light on the subject so we can film. But I made a good shot. There was four deer in the field, three young deer, and then this nice six four that came in. And uh, I, I uh, made a good shot on him, and, and uh, end of story. Now the work begins. Nice deer, nice deer. I'm hunting the late season. There's snow on the ground, and I've got my brand new Black Widow longbow. I'm hunting a wood line between a block of timber and an old overgrown apple orchard. After only about 10 minutes on stand, I already have deer working out of the timber down towards the apple orchard. This young deer feeds on a couple of green ferns poking up through the winter snow. As this doe works her way underneath my stand, I notice the low battery light on my camera. I'm not sure I can get the shot off before the battery goes totally dead. The battery finally quits just seconds after the shot. As you saw in the footage, I have a little bit of film of the deer before they came in when they were feeding up in the, the woods there before they entered the field. Unfortunately, the battery was going dead on the camera, so I shut it off and I have the last little bit of her coming in underneath to me and me shooting and hitting her and her running off. Well, then I lost all battery power. It's the day after Christmas. 2007 um, so I left the woods I hit when I hit her it looked like I hit her back farther than I did and I watched her run off through the woods which I didn't didn't get on film because the battery was dead but I could see where the last place marked where I had seen her went home had dinner now it was about four o'clock when I shot her and now I came back with my dad and my son my oldest son Billy and it's about 8:30 now and uh, we found her a very short distance from the last place I had seen her um, so she didn't go very far, and I probably could have recovered her right then and there, but when in doubt, you always get out and uh, give it some time. Giving it some time, especially if it's a good hit, isn't going to hurt any, and if it's a bad hit, it can buy you, buy you the necessary time that you need for the animal to expire. But nice mature doe. I shot it with my uh, brand new Black Widow longbow that Black Widow just built for me this past fall. I got it in October and haven't had a chance to hunt with it all that much. I was able to shoot it a little bit in November and uh, came out today and ended up being a good shot on this uh, probably a couple two and a half or three and a half year old doe 
here in Connecticut the day after Christmas. Yep. Did you enjoy this, Bill? Yep, it was cool. Yeah. yeah. I kind of like this. Three generations here. Yeah. Yeah. Three generations of Langers out bow hunting. On this turkey hunt, I'm going to showcase some of my world-renowned shooting skills. Some may ask me why I love it so. That shows they've never been here. All alone with Mother Nature. With all of her creatures near. This turkey is as hot as a Tom turkey gets in the spring. He wants that hen and he wants her not. It's a brand new day. It's the hunter's camouflage morning. I love waking up this way. Just listen to the music that old Longbeard's gotten again. Me, I've got to answer and try to bring him in. After my first great shot, the turkey flies behind us, starts strutting, gobbling, and coming back in again. The hunter's camouflage mornings. Pray they'll never end. Yeah, I know that first shot was bad, but this next shot's gonna be better. In my pocket, I carry the music. I've got a box and a slate and a bone. You ought to see that old time dancing when the calls are turning him on. All of nature smiles at the splendor as he struts and dances around on a hunter's camouflage morning. Oh, the wonders to be found. Okay, three times a charm. Just listen to the music that old Longbeard's goblin again. Me, I've got to answer and try to bring him in. A tradition handed down to me, played over through time again. The hunter's camouflage mornings. I pray they'll never end. Loser. That bird came running right in. We weren't ready for him. Uh, I shot three times. Um, the only excuse I have, every shot was rushed. and <laughs> I tried to take my time, but the angles were bad. It was a real quick setup. And, you know, we educated that bird something serious. I don't even know how good the footage was. We were shaking and jumping from window to window. But I gotta go out and try collecting my arrows here. They're all over the place. The first time I hit my sleeve, I took some clothes off. The first time I hit my sleeve, I know that. But let's see if he gobbles on. That darn bird was hot. Let's see if we can find the arrows. One, two, three. All clean misses on one tom. That's lame. That's bad. There's another turkey goblin. That one's over in the orchard. Might have to edit this footage severely. I wasn't even in the right zip code on those birds. Well, we reset up with those other birds were gobbling, and needless to say, my dad grabbed the bow this time, and I manned the camera. These birds never even gobbled. They just all of a sudden showed up about a hundred yards out from the blind. <laughs> Apparently I get my great shooting skills from the old man. First, we thought my father had just missed. We are the world's worst turkey hunters. <laughs> and 
At least it's fun. It's fun. <laughs> I gotta calm down and concentrate. I thought I was concentrating on that one, on the second shot, but obviously I was low. We still got that big time working in, I think. A few minutes after my father's shot, I looked out the window in the direction that the Jakes had flown, and I noticed this bird up on a limb. And the longer I watched him, the more he looked like he wasn't doing too well, and I thought he might be the bird that my father had hit. That's the bird that you hit. Who's the arrow? I did hit him, though. You saw him land in that tree there to the left of that hemlock. Yeah, yeah he, he... He was looking, looking sick. He landed there. I got some footage of him sitting right up there on that branch. He landed right in there. Did I definitely hit him? Yeah, no. He was looking sick, and it's been probably a good half hour since you shot him, so. Well, with the other birds that were still gobbling, and that big time that was behind us with the multiple tags, you know, we didn't want to go after him right away, but. That big Tom finally walked off, so figured go out and check to see what happened with this. We gotta walk over there and see see if there's any blood or anything. Yeah, let's go over there. That is a tree. Yeah, that's the tree he was in right there. That I could see him sitting up there and he was looking sick. He floated, uh, I didn't get it on a film, but he, he just, all of a sudden, just dropped out of the tree. I don't see him here, but... Oh yeah, yeah, a little blood here. Oh yeah. Look at it. Hold on to the hit. The hit looked low, but I bet you you caught him in the legs. Look at that blood. For a turkey... It's quite a bit of blood there. For a turkey, that's a lot of blood. Look at it, it goes over there. Yeah, definitely. Even splattered on the side of the tree. Look at it. Oh yeah, yeah. On the side. Turkeys usually don't bleed much. I bet you caught him in the legs. Look at it here. <laughs> Look over your shoulder. Oh, there he is. <laughs> there he is though. All right. You know that's a good thing we didn't go after him. I would have pushed him. Might not have never found him. Yeah. Let me get him out of here. I can't. It's a good thing those other birds were gobbling and kept us in the blind. Because we would have pushed them, I bet. We watched them, or I watched them in the tree. I know you couldn't see them. Oh, yeah, look at them. Where'd you get them? Right yeah, in the legs? Right through the legs there. Yeah. Not enough to break. Let's see. Both legs. But he was losing blood. Well, they say if you're going to hit a turkey low, you got to hit him real low in the legs because there's nothing down there. Look, you caught both. Both legs. Both legs. I guess he was staying broadside. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Little Jake. Good job. Little Jake, yeah. Look what I got. A tick. A tick already, my God. I thought I felt something crawling on me. <laughs> That's disgusting. At least I caught a tick. You know, where we set up there, they've been logging. and it, We've been hunting this farm for years. I have, anyways, for about 50 years now. And they've been cutting some logs, making some more pasture land here. We heard them gobble, so we set up. You can see the fuel tank that we were set up by. Came in, the three of them came in. Uh, first shot wasn't too good, <laughs> but at least the second shot hit. Let's see, I shot three times, you shot two, so we're, we're one, one for five. One for five, yeah. Yes, 20% success. <laughs> I don't know how that does nationally, but. We are the world's worst turkey hunters. Nice. Well, I guess we better get a tag on him. Yeah, nice Jake. Yeah. Where's the pigs? I'm also behind the camera on this hunt as I film my brother-in-law, Eric, chasing South Florida hogs.
One of the hogs picks up our movement, and for now the stock is on hold. Pigs decide they better not stick around and move off into the brush. We circle around the pigs and at this point are hurrying to cut them off. There he is, there he is, there he is. We finally have one in front of us and Eric stands patiently, waiting for a shot. Eric, nice shot. Now let's head back in time to the first hunt we ever captured over my father's shoulder. I'm filming with an old Super VHS video camera. First Pavelina, first morning, we decided to, to stalk this area. A lot of prickly pear. Uh, it looked real good. I could see a lot of gnaw marks on a prickly pear. And we were just stalking around. Uh, all of a sudden, on our left, it started to come through. So I spotted some, so I waited. First one walked out in the open, and uh, I shot him. Hit him, uh, hit him right here. Good double lung shot. Uh, Real pleased with it. On this hunt, we join my longtime friend Derek Jabs as he films my father in northern Maine. My dad has to watch this bear come in and out of the bait site several times before offering him a good shot. Good job, Dick. Patient here. Unfortunately, I I made a shot on a a decent bear, young boar. And uh, like I say, we captured it all on film, so now the work begins dragging it out. Not too bad, guys, huh? No.
Mike, tell me what's going on here. This camera is the camera I used in Africa, and I used this season to film some whitetail kills that I was just filming myself for Bill's videos. And we just got into his editing room and realized that not only did the thing sound like an old World War II, it didn't have no sound quality at all to it. So we have to kill this thing. So I think that's what we're going to do. What do you think, Bill? I think that camera ruined a lot of good hunting footage. All it does is, man, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, the Zimbabwe, the elephant hunt. <laughs> all of it. Now look at it. <laughs> There's only one way to take care of a bad camera <laughs> with a good hit. Nice shot, Mike. <laughs> Double long or what? Now, that's not a sh that's called a cannon shish kebab right there. <laughs> We're going to serve this thing up on the next hunt to, <laughs> to something. I'll tell you what, this camera cost me a lot of grief right here. That's too bad. The footage, the footage is pretty good, but the uh, the sound, the sound didn't come out at all. Yeah, it's ruined yeah. it. But well, we'll, we'll we're going to show you the footage next, anyways. And we didn't quite get a pass through, but you know what are you going to do? Yeah, I'll take it. Now it's time to go get a real camera. <laughs> nice. There's a big buck in the moonlight. He's wreaking havoc upon a little tree. Polishing up his main beans. He's not even thinking about me. I've been sharpening up my broad hips. I've been practicing with my bow. There's a contest between us that's coming. He's a hard one to hunt, I should know. You see, I've chased him for two other seasons, always thinking that he would be mine. But he always stayed one step ahead of me Yes, he beat me every time That was then, yesterday I've learned a lot about that buck and his ways There'll come a moment when he'll slip up This old hunter will be there for his prey It's an old game, the one we're playing. It's been around since the beginning of Ben's days. One hundred. Okay, we'll check in with Mad Dog hunting. later. But for right it's now, let's get back to our African bow hunting adventure. It's been a lot of fun here in Africa. And today being the fifth day of the hunt, we're halfway through. We've got five more days to go after today. Actually, I just got here, so we've got six days to hunt. And um, it's been a lot of fun. Africa is incredible. It's a really good place to be with the bow and arrow. I've often heard the wildebeest referred to as a poor man's buffalo. And because I'll never be able to afford a buffalo hunt, this bull looked just fine to me. Antonia told us that the oldest, most mature wildebeest bulls would travel by themselves. And when this one walked across the plain by himself and then was pushing these young Gemsbach away, I knew he was a bull that I'd want to take. All that I needed now was for him to turn broadside and present me with a shot. Oh, 
That's good. Yes. Big blue wildebeest. Big blue wildebeest. That's just what I've been looking for. My heart's beating fast, my hands are shaking. Man, is this wind blowing. Well, we got the blue wildebeest here. Um, I made a pretty good hit on him. Uh, he was quartering slightly to me, and I could have been forward a little bit. Uh, we trailed him, got on him about an hour after I hit him, and we did jump him, and I had to put another couple of arrows into him. The first one wasn't too good at all, but the second one found its mark, and sometimes that happens, it's unfortunate, but a real nice, beautiful blue wildebeest. On this hunt, my father's back in the pit blind, and he's got his eyes on this red heart of beast. As the bull pulls around broadside, Dad gets ready for a shot. shot a hard to be spool. The shot looks pretty good. A little bit high, but the four and a half looks pretty good. Uh, got the pH coming in, so we'll see what happens here. We'll get them come in and uh, we'll pick up the trail. Wish me luck. We're tracking Dick Bull here with zero blood. Blood there. It's amazing how these. I like to see that. It's amazing how these guys track. There hasn't been any blood for a while. I know. They... It's not very big though, huh? Small one? No, it's just it, It's a big bull. Yeah. No, gonna... Yeah. It is. <laughs> Are you teasing me? It was. It was. Is this piece of the? It's a very big one. Man. It is? Yeah. Very yeah. big. Thank you. Thank you. That's the exit, so I guess the hit wasn't too bad. Maybe it should have been a little bit lower? Yeah. I think I got to start shooting for the armpit. Uh, it's pretty wide open here. A lot different than what I've been hunting was pretty brushed up but here it's uh, this is where the old farmstead was on the property when Antoni first bought it from his father they lived here for a while and now where we're staying they've been there for about nine years but this is where the original homestead was and the old foundations all rubble over there but this must have been all cattle pasture at one time and that's what Antoni used to do for a living is run beef cattle and he has some beef cattle on some separate property but right now um, all he's doing is a hunting operation. He's got quite an operation here. It's small, it's very personable, very nice person. Him and his family and three kids live out here. And I could get used to this African lifestyle, that's for sure. This is awesome. This Gemsbach is actually a female. They have longer, thinner horns, whereas the males have shorter, thicker horns. But her horns were so much longer and more impressive than the other Gemsbach that I was seeing that I thought if she'd come in, I'd go ahead and try and take her.
In slow motion here, you can see the blood behind her left front shoulder. She was quartering away hard, and the broadhead exited just behind it. Man, I hit that Gemsbach. I hit that Gemsbach, but it looks like a little bit back. Darn it. I'll have to see what happens. I saw good blood coming out the opposite side, so maybe I caught a lung or something, but... That was tough. Hopefully things will work out. I reviewed the tape, and <laughs> she wasn't on camera when I shot. I thought I thought the, the camera angle was good, but I had stepped away from the camera, and I had to stop her. I made a little noise to stop her. Um, so I, I can't even review the hit, but when I shot, it looked like it was back. Although when I reviewed the camera, I saw her running, running away. I think you can see it, too. You can see blood behind her left side shoulder, the opposite side shoulder, and she was quartering away pretty good when I shot. So hopefully we're going to luck out here. I know the broadhead went to the other side of her, and um, that Wenzel Woodsman's done good so far, so hopefully hopefully it'll do the job this time. Not a perfect shot, but I think we'll do okay with it. The hit was a little far back, but it was angled up pretty hard. I lucked out. It was a. Uh, she stepped forward when I was filming. I just um, I, w I, I was drawn as she stepped and I shot. She stepped out of camera. I shot. I hit back. Um, but it worked out in the end. I didn't have to shoot her again. She, she died on her own. But a nice gems box. Or Oryx, I guess. She looks pretty good. Is she a good one? Yeah, good. Yeah, Very I good. She was. Nice. Thanks, Antoni. Man, oh. look at those daggers. They're long. Unbelievable. Just a beautiful animal. This Africa hunting is outstanding. Hey. Absolutely outstanding. Congratulations, Bill. Thank you. Now we'll join my father at the homestead blind. He's got a really nice kudu bowl in front of him. The kudu bowl and these kudu cows are feeding on a mineral supplement that Antoni puts out for them year round. And it accounts for his good high quality animals. The best thing a bow hunter can see after releasing an arrow is watching the animal go down. I'm elated. I really am. Uh, I definitely wanted the kudu. To me, they represent Africa. Uh, I know a lot of other people say the lion or the giraffe or zebra. Uh, Everybody has their own opinion. Shot for me. And uh, fortunately, I made a good hit on this one. Didn't go 70, 80 yards, and I watched it pile up. So I'm real, real pleased. Thanks again to uh, Antoni Lowe and Macalon Safaris here. They've done an excellent job as far as I'm concerned. I'm in a blind we call the mamba pit. <laughs> it's a grass-covered pit blind. And uh, the reason why we call it the mamba pit is because if a black mamba wants to come in here that we're 
all a little worried about. He can come right through any sides. It's not like one of the concrete bunkers where he only has a couple holes, so. The amount of birds in Africa is unbelievable. You always have something to watch like this vulture. When this hawk arrived late in the afternoon, he kept all the doves at bay for a while. Once he left, however, it was like Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. Just as I was about to call it a day, this diker slipped from the brush for a drink of water. I quickly adjusted the cameras and readied for the shot. The hit was good and the diker didn't go far. <clears throat> I just shot another diker. <clears throat> Looks like I made a good hit on him. It's right in the front shoulder there. I think I got plenty of penetration. Um, he's just slow to go down there. I'll just mark right where he went into the woods and I don't think he went very far. Those little diker are cool. Nice little black horns on them. They're really neat. All right. This is awesome. What a beautiful animal. Beautiful animal. Just can't believe it. So pretty. This uh, this is a mature one, but they're they're not very they're not very big. It's a mature diker, but it's not very big. Um, but I put a good hit on him, took him right off his feet, and he ran over, ran over into the bush here about, I don't know, maybe a hundred yards from the, from the water hole. Um, but I used my, my old Black Widow bow again, and of course the Wenzel Woodsman. But I can't thank Black Widow enough or Dale Karch from Three Rivers Archery for hooking me up with some good equipment. It's just a great time hunting here in Africa. Absolutely love it. <laughs> There's only one way to take care of a bad camera, <laughs> with a good hit. Now let's take a look at a couple of Mad Dog's African hunts with his broken camera. My home is far away from here, I hail from Wyoming. You may wonder what I'm doing here, where the lion is the king. Here on this dark continent, I'm not chasing cows. Zebra, gazelle, and wildebeest are what I'm chasing now. African cowboy, you've traded in your horse. You're traveling now by four-wheel drive, and steady is your course. You're searching for adventure, back home the West is tamed. But like the old frontier in Wild Bill's day, the excitement here's the same.
Mike thinks that this calf wildebeest running in is a cull cow that he can shoot for no charge. It's actually a young bull. Trophy fee, $800. One wrong move is all it would take. And you'll never see your home again. Back in Wyoming. But you've never felt more alive than here. Where at night the lions sing. African cowboy. You've traded in your horse. You're traveling now by four-wheel drive. Steady is your course. You're searching for adventure. Back home the West is tamed. But like the old frontier in Wild Bill's day, the excitement here's the same. African cowboy. African cowboy. African cowboy. So Mike, tell us about the wildebeest again that you shot that monster bull. Well, I shot at a bull that I thought was, I mean, I shot at a cow that I thought was a, what would be a representative cow of the blue wildebeest. And after I came out of the blind, I says to Antoni, <laughs> give him the line in the camera, I says, the cows are the ones with the pointed horns, right? <laughs> and he says, no. And I says, you've never had anybody do that before? And he says, no, never. <laughs> oh, what are you going to do? No, that was good with no mic. Good job. Thanks for the monster.